Today, we'll be taking photos of consumer electronics using Shutterstream product photography software. Uh, on the screen here, we have the main UI of Shutterstream. Uh, on the left hand side, you will see the word image capture. Uh, all the buttons under here are used for composing and capturing images. I've connected a compatible camera through USB to my computer, and that's going to allow me to send commands to my camera through mouse clicks. Let's get started. I will click the Live View button. Live View will bring up a real-time preview of what my camera sees. As you can see, my hand going back and forth in the Live window. I'm going to grab an object. We're going to be shooting a camera. And I will position this object as required. After we've positioned our object, what we want to do first and foremost is make sure that our camera settings are correct for our lighting environment and we can do so through mouse clicks. So I'll go and start making changes to my aperture, to my shutter speed, uh, to my white balance, etc. And as you can see, when I'm making these changes on the monitor screen in real time, these changes are, uh, are being reflected. Uh, we've built into uh, the Live View window, uh, window uh, exposure simulation. And basically what this allows you to do is see the exact uh, exposure of the image that you're going to capture before you've even captured it. So while still looking in the live view window. After you've optimized your camera settings, you can actually save these. Nice thing about that is now that now that you've optimized your camera settings for your lighting, anyone can now walk up to the computer and start taking photos through the Shutterstream program, regardless of photography experience. Uh, so our standard workflow here, pardon me, our standard workflow here will be to, let me just go back. Uh, our standard workflow here will be to, uh, while in live view, we're going to pre-crop our object. As you can see, I just click and drag over the monitor screen. And basically we're defining the area that we wish to shoot. Uh, nice thing about this crop as well is, in the crop options you can define, maybe you need all your images for your website or for your catalog at a specific you know, pixel size, maybe it's 500 by 500 pixels or you know, 800 by 600, whatever it might be. You can actually define to always crop in a perfect square or a custom ratio. So let's choose square here. And you're gonna see when I drag my crop marker, it defines that in a perfect one-to-one -one square ratio. So I'll go ahead and drag that over my object. Once I'm ready to shoot, I'll just hit my snap button. Within seconds, that captures an image and uploads that image to my computer. Maybe we want to shoot another angle of this product. I'll go ahead and hit Live View. It remembers my exact same crop marker. And I will position as required. Simply from here, I'll hit my snap button again. And we will do so for two more pictures, maybe we'll show a back here. Okay. And then we'll show the other side view. So you can see how fast and efficient it is for capturing images. You no longer have to go and crop after the fact because you're defining that before you even capture. So as our images are captured, obviously they're being uploaded to our program in real time. And they're being stored in the thumbnail viewing gallery at the bottom and you can go and click through these and start inspecting these images if required. You can take a look up close, see one-to-one, -one, inspect image quality if required. Everything looks good. All right, now our next step is we wanna go and process and output these for our, uh, for our website or desired application. I'm gonna select these four images using the Xbox to the left of the thumbnail. So I've selected all four images and what I wanna do first is go and edit these images. In the editing tool, what I'll want to do, for my website I require images on a pure white background. That's pretty standard in the, uh, the industry, even if you're selling on uh, you know, Amazon. They always say pure white background. So we want to go and inspect that, and we can do so using the eyedropper tool. I'll click the eyedropper tool, and I can go and start mousing over the actual image. And if you watch up in the top left here, you'll see an RGB color value. And basically, that color value right now means it's pure white, 255, 255, 255. So we say, okay, we've shot our images, they're on pure white backgrounds, now let's go and make a couple small changes, maybe slightly increase our image quality. So we'll do so with our sharpness, we'll crank that up to four, and then maybe we'll make the black a little bit darker here, and I can do that using my curves tool. 
Once it looks good to go, since I've shot all my same images under the same lighting with the same camera settings, I'll hit apply to all. And those edits that I've just made are going to be applied to the entire set of images in a batch process. You'll see the progress bar and then we'll be notified that the operation is complete. Simply from here we want to go and output our images. I'm going to use the dynamic save tool. So I'm going to click up in the top left hand corner and I'm going to give my file a name or my files. So it's going to be camera. Uh, sequential naming will name them sequentially. So it'll be dash one, dash two, dash three, dash four. If I did want to name them differently um, based on what image it is, I could disable sequential naming, I can do actually specify this thing, so I'll call it front, side, I'll call it side one, because we have two sides, back, side two. Okay, after we've done so, basically I've already created the profile and saved it inside of here for my dynamic saving because I require every single image that I shoot at three different sizes for my site. So basically what I've said is I need a thumbnail and I'm saying resize that to 150 by 150 pixels. I also need a master image for my product page at 500 by 500. Then I want the kind of enlarged view at 1000 by 1000 pixels. I've also chosen these resolution 72 dpi format jpeg. Another nice feature about this is that you can instantly apply your own company logo as a watermark. So if you'd actually uploaded your own company logo into the program, you would see it in the drop down and you could choose to apply it to a single image or you know to the entire set of images. Uh, you can also directly transfer these to an FTP if you wanted them to go straight to the web uh, in addition to a local folder. Uh, and uh, obviously you define where you want to save these images. I'm going to save them all to the same folder. It'll just be easier for us after the fact to go and inspect the images. Once it looks good to go, I'll simply hit the OK button. You will see it processes. So it's four images being saved three times. We're going to output a total of 12 images. Um, once again, it's each of these four images at three different image sizes. And let's go and inspect that folder. And we can see here the images that we created. So these are the 500 by 500 pixel images, all on pure white backgrounds. These are the, all the thumbnails. And then last, we will see the uh, the 1,000 by 1,000, kind of the master images. So very high quality results captured really in just seconds. Uh, Shutterstream is certainly a tool that's going to save your business a lot of time and money every time you take a photo and it also makes it very simple on users regardless of experience to create high quality results. Thank you for your time.